Hi there and welcome. Rebecca from Laugh So Create. It's perfect time to be making an apron either for yourself or as a gift. In today's tutorial, I wanted to share with you how to make a half apron. And if you can't get your hands on a pattern for a half apron, not to worry, I'm going to take you step by step, laying out your pattern pieces, cutting them out, learning what some of the basic symbols are, and by the end of it, you will have made an apron. Now, the one that I made using the pattern is this little green one. I did make some modifications to the pockets. I'll be showing you how I did those, but I'll also show you how to make the one that is in the pattern. But if you can't get your hands on the pattern, I will show you how I made this apron, which is similar. It doesn't have all the curves that the original pattern has, but it has the same feel with a bias binding. And I think it turned out pretty cute. I did add a little loop for towel or for dusting rags or whatever you wanna use the apron for. And I did make pockets that were square. I added bias binding as a decorative bit between the apron and the flounce. And I did add bias binding all the way around. I actually made the bias binding that it would match the apron, but you can buy pre-made bias binding and make the whole project a lot quicker. <laughs> pattern that I'm using is a Butterick pattern. We're gonna be making B6236, and I'm going to be showing you how to make view A, which is a short apron. So let me show you what supplies you'll need for this project. You'll be using about a yard to a yard and one eighth of the fabric. And then you'll just need some matching thread and about three packets of the bias binding. And obviously you'll also need some basic sewing supplies that you should have on hand, or you could probably borrow from somebody like a sewing machine, some fabric scissors, pins, it's helpful to have a rotary cutter and mat if possible. Not necessary, it's just a little easier in getting some straight angles. And I think that's it. I know I'm gonna be washing the apron a lot because I'm a messy cook. So what I want to do is treat the fabric. I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm going to throw it in the washing machine and I'm going to wash it just like I'm gonna wash it once it's assembled. So the next thing is you're going to familiarize yourself with the pattern. Hopefully you've already taken your measurements, you know which pattern you purchased and you've purchased the right amount of fabric. The next thing I like to do is to cut out all the pieces of the patterns that I'm going to need. Now, more specifically, patterns that you get are all gonna be folded up. So you wanna make sure that you take the pattern pieces and try to flatten them out as much as you can to get some of the wrinkles out because you want them to lay flat incorrectly on your fabric. And so sometimes I've been known to kind of press them. So how do you decide what size to cut out? Well, at this point you will have looked at all your measurements and you will have decided which size you're gonna be cutting out. fabric that I've purchased is the 45 inch fabric. I know that when I'm going to lay out my fabric in order to appropriately position the pattern pieces on it, I'm going to be following this diagram. 45 inch one and I'm going to follow this layout. Now if you were going to have a 54 inch wide fabric then you would choose this layout. So as far as the pieces that I will need to find, I'm going to need to make sure that I have two, which is the pocket three, which is the apron, four, which is the flounce, and then I'm gonna need another layout of a pocket. On all patterns, you will find the number. If you look under this section, it will tell you exactly the name, and you'll see it repeated on the tissue paper on the pattern piece. It will tell you exactly how many to cut. On your pattern pieces, you will also find funny little triangular 
symbols known as a notch and it basically tells you that you need to make a small clip when you're cutting out your fabric at this location. You will also find placement lines as to what maybe a placement of a pocket. You will also find this frequent symbol which is a kind of a line with two-sided arrow tells you that this pattern when you go to set it down it needs to be on the fold of the fabric this has a fold line marking and it also has the grain line which is also very important for when you're laying out your pattern pieces and i'll show you what i mean by that when i look at the pattern pieces i see that there are various dash lines the smaller size are all these small little dashes the medium is a longer dash and the large is a solid line. So for all the pattern pieces, what I've done is I've cut around the large for myself. Now you would cut out the appropriate size for you. I'm gonna find two, which is a pocket, and I'm going to find piece number three, which is the apron piece. I'm going to need piece number four, which is a the flounce. All right, so going back to the directions. So I know that I'm gonna be cutting with a fold because I've already seen that on my pattern piece that it says that I need to place one of the pattern pieces on the fold. So it tells me in the directions to fold the fabric right sides together. And so the grain line means that you're gonna place on straight grain of fabric, keeping lines, the line parallel to the salvage or fold. Okay, so what does that mean, the grain line? To understand the proper placement of your pattern pieces, you need to understand what the grain line means. Different fabric has different amount of stretch to it. You want to make sure that you're following the directions on how to place the fabric piece on your fabric in order to make sure that you're not gonna get some unwanted twisting in your finished garment. It's important to know where your salvages are. And the salvages are the sides where the fabric came off from the loom. And it'll be that white banding. Usually it has little tiny holes in it. It also usually has the manufacturer on the side. So when folding your fabric, you wanna make sure that those salvage lines are perfectly lined up on both sides. And that is going to tell me that all of the fibers are going to be running in the correct direction. I know that these fibers are all running in that direction and this direction. And the pattern directions tell me to put it, the pattern pieces on the straight grain, which means parallel to the salvage line. Let's take a closer look. One thing you want to know is that way is your fabric is going to be folded. So if you take a closer look at the way this, this diagram shows you, and so you're gonna be laying your pattern pieces on the white side or the wrong side of the fabric. So it tells me here that the, with a fold, I need to fold the fabric right sides together. You wanna make sure that your wrong sides are facing out and line up your salvage lines. It's telling me to take piece number two and I'm gonna put it wrong side of the pattern. This particular piece can be on the cross grain or on the straight grain. The diagram is showing it on the cross grain. In other words, you're getting it lined up with those fibers. What you don't wanna do is put it on the diagonal, which is the biased, and that's how you get a lot of stretch. So then the next piece is going to be piece number four, and it is also going to be wrong side of the pattern. So that is the right side of the pattern, so I'm gonna put it on the wrong side of the pattern and I'm going to mimic how it's laying out in the direction. So I know that one side tells me to actually place it on the fold. You can use pattern weights or you can actually pin it down and then I'm going to place number three with a wrong side down. Number three is the apron. Okay, so I'm gonna double check the layout to make sure it looks just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pins or the pattern weights. Okay. So I have one piece, so I'm gonna to need to use this pattern piece, the right side up for the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one to the side. And I'm gonna actually take an erasable marker and put on the back of this that this one was the one that was wrong side. One of the pocket pieces needs to be, pattern needs to be right side of the pattern facing up. 
So we'll do it this way. All right, so I'm gonna carry on and cut out the other pieces. So you'll have four pocket pieces. Take each pocket and you want to have them wrong sides together and pin. Stitch all the way around at a 5 8 of an inch using a basting stitch. So that means a 4 to a 6 millimeter stitch length all the way around. Next, we're going to encase the pockets with the bias tape. You want to make sure that the bias tape overlaps when we come around the other side. So I'm going to start pinning the bias tape on the pocket. So at the corners, you'll want to miter the corners. And just keep working with it until you get a 45 degree angle that you like. And continue down the side. Okay, so I've completed one pocket and I just wanted to show you to complete the joining of the bias tape. You want to undo one end and you want to turn it in by about a quarter of an inch and then fold it back up. And then you're going to encase the unfinished or the raw edge and then clip it in place to where it all lines up. Take both of the pockets to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch in from the interior edge of of the pocket so on this side on the inner side and I'm gonna use a three millimeter stitch length and the main thing here is to make sure that you're catching both of the pieces of binding and back stitch the beginning and the end and I need my spectacles okay I'm gonna use a stiletto as I get close to the corner, you can easily use a flathead screwdriver or whatever that you have laying around just to help you with that and repeat for the other pocket. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to unpick the basting stitches and pull those out. Don't need those anymore. So as you remove the basting stitches, it'll leave little tiny holes and get those holes out. All you have to do is just spray, mist it with water, and then press it with an iron. And you can kind of use your finger to realign those fibers. Okay, so now that I've punched a few holes in the pocket corners, I'm gonna take a, a pencil and I'm just gonna mark where those spots are. Okay, so go ahead and pin the pockets on and I'm gonna go ahead and fold the pocket down where the markings are. You're gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch on the exterior part of the bias binding using the same stitch length as you used on the inside. So we're gonna go around from this fold line of where the pocket folds over, down, around, and up. And repeat on this side as well. Don't forget the short end. Back stitch here and back stitch at the end. It tells you to keep curve portion out and you can play with yours and decide if you like it that way. But given that is exactly where the bias binding meets and it's really difficult to kind of make it look tidy. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take the pocket and I'm gonna flip it inside. That way I have a nice clean diagonal and I'm going to take it to the machine and just top stitch it down. That way it won't flip in and out as I'm putting my hand in and out. Next, grab the flounce stay stitch along the inside of the flounce. Okay, so for stay stitching, you want to make sure that you're stitching inside the 5 eighths. You wanna keep your stay stitching at an eighth of an inch. And what stay stitching does is it keeps it from stretching. It kind of helps stabilize it. Let's grab your apron with the pockets, fold it in half and find the center point pin the flounce to the apron matching the notches and matching the center. I'm going to flip it all over, match the center points, pin your notches, and then you can come back and pin between the center and the notches and repeat on the other side all the way down to the edges. Everything's been pinned. Next, I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
Take it to the ironing board, press the seam towards the apron. So in other words, I want it going up towards the pockets. Okay, so once you've attached the flounce to the main apron part by stitching, you will flip it to the right side and just top stitched to kind of just leave a plainer look. But it would be at this point that you would take your bias tape and put it on that seam and you could do a top stitch on either side all the way across to get that extra detail. Grab your bias tape. If you've got the store-bought or the homemade, you will take it and you're going to encase the sides of the raw edges of the apron and you're going to attach the bias tape all the way down the side, the bottom, and back up the other side. Because I think I prefer a simpler look, I'm going to actually hem all the way around. A neat little trick is to just take it to the sewing machine and use your guide on your sewing machine and stitch it quarter inch and then use that stitching line as a guide to flip it. That way you can kind of keep a consistent edge. Okay, so before you go to try to hem it, if the edges aren't quite straight, just take your ruler and rotary cutter and straighten out those edges. Okay, so if you're gonna use the bias tape to make your strap, to go around your waist. You'll want to hold up your apron and wrap it around yourself and see where you want those ties to finish. You're going to open up the end of your bias binding and you're going to turn it over by about half an inch and you can press it and then you're gonna turn in your edges like so. You'll just make sure that your raw edges are all encased. That way when you come around to stitch, it'll be a nice finish to the edge of your ties. So it's the same principle if you make your own. So the nice thing about finishing the sides first, all you have to do is just tuck in the raw edge of the corner inside your bias tape and then you'll get a nice finished product. Okay, so next I'm going to pop stitch it all the way around, securing the raw edge of the apron in. Okay, so I just wanted to take a minute and show you that if you don't have the pattern, you can make a template. So for piece number two, which is the pocket, I just made a square, seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches, cut four, and it doesn't have to be on the fold. Since this is a double layer, I'll just cut it twice for the apron number three. I just made a 14 by 14 inch square. By putting it on the fold, it just gives you a smaller piece that is easier to handle handle cut just one out on the fold you'll have a piece that is 14 inches by 28 inches long and that is for the main apron panel for piece number four which is the flounce as you can see the flounce is a curved part but i just made it into a rectangle just to make it a little bit easier and the flounce you just cut one on the fold 10 inches by 16.5 that way when it's on the fold you'll get one long rectangular piece that is 10 inches by 33 and cut so next mark the center point of your apron as well as your flounce so you'll be gathering up the flounce so it'll be the same width as the apron there are several ways of doing this you can do it by hand with a needle and thread or you could also do it on the sewing machine. Now the point of having the marking in the center is to make sure that you somewhat have your center points lined up and so you'll want to move all these gathers down and evenly distribute it and get it to the point where your edges of the flounce are matching the edges of your apron with the center points lined up. You're, all you're gonna do is flip it over, make sure your center points are pinned together, and pin both sides, then stitch all the way across. And then you can remove the basting stitches. So you would take your two pieces and 
place them right sides together, pin them. You're gonna stitch all the way around the pocket with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, fine back stitching. You wanna leave a gap so that you can turn it. Back stitching on this side of the gap as well as the other, that way it reinforces it when you turn. Trim the corners, turn it right side out and push out your corners. Just press it. At your turning gap, you're turning the edges in and pressing. Okay, so then you would take your pocket that you just made and you would want the turning gap placed at the bottom. That way, when you go to stitch it onto the apron and you'll stitch across, you'll catch that turning gap and you come up and stitch all the way to the top, leaving the top part open as your pocket and back stitching at both sides. That way it'll reinforce it. I'm gonna cover three things. One, I'm gonna show you how exactly to make this apron. Two, I'm gonna give you some modifications. And three. Oh, I had the three points in my head. Do you think I'm gonna remember? Oh my gosh, darn it. Well, maybe there are just two points. <laughs>